Welcome to True Crime Garage. Wherever you are, whatever you are doing, thanks for listening. I'm your host, Nick, and with me, as always, is a man that knows America is all about freedom, but mostly it's about beer and fireworks. Ladies and gentlemen, Captain America. That's America with two M's. It's good to be seen, and it's good to see you. Thanks for listening. Thanks for telling a friend. All right, Captain, today we are drinking red, white, and blue IPA by one of my favorite breweries. That is Cigar City Brewing down in Florida. Garage grade four out of five bottle caps. Red, white, and blue IPA is aged on white and red oak with blueberries. And this week, our fridge is full thanks to all of our friends. And we salute these fine members of the Garage Army. First up, we have Chelsea in Milwaukee. Milwaukee. And a big shout out to Les in Melbourne, Australia. And a cheers to Marcus in Winter Park, Florida. And a big we like your jib to Daphne in Long Island, New York. And a long distance fist bump to Keeley in Calgary, Alberta. And last but certainly not least, Anne in Cape Cod, Massachusetts. Thanks to everybody for filling up the fridge for this week. If you want to help us out with next week's show, go to truecrimegarage.com and click on the donate button. And if you want to follow us on social media, check us out on Instagram, Facebook, or Snapchat at True Crime Garage. That's enough of the business. Everybody gather around, grab a chair, grab a beer. Let's talk some true crime. Well, Captain, this is a story that took place last year and one that I've been pretty upset about because it has made no progress in the year that has passed. So this information, Captain, is from Fox 16 News and the Melvern Daily Journal. This is about the Hot Spring County, Arkansas Sheriff's Office. They say the Sheriff's Office is mourning the loss of one of its own, a nearly four-year-old canine deputy named Lucky. The canine had been with the Sheriff's Office for a couple of years, but only with his handler since February of 2017. Sheriff Mike Cash said, since the dog's death, the dog's handler is no longer with the department. Sheriff Cash said it has nothing to do with Lucky's death but won't say whether the deputy quit or whether the deputy was fired. Sheriff Cash said Lucky was found dead in the backyard of his handler's home on Sunday evening, July 23rd, 2017, so almost a year ago. Lucky was reportedly tied up in the deputy's yard when he was found dead. Sheriff Cash provided additional details on the death of the dog, saying Lucky's blood was found on his leg when he was found by his handler. Reports on Lucky's cause of death vary, however. The initial necropsy performed by Arkansas Livestock and Poultry Commission several days after Lucky was found dead questions whether heat stroke or gunshot wounds were a factor in its death. Hmm. Upon further examination, the preliminary, preliminary report concluded that Lucky died of blunt force trauma. But then two months later, another necropsy was performed with inconclusive results. The Arkansas Livestock and Poultry Commission says it does not discuss the specifics of any of their cases. So was it a gunshot wound? You know, did somebody shoot this dog? Was it blunt force trauma or was it heat stroke? Because the initial reports came out that it might have been heat stroke. This dog was tied up in the handler's backyard for the course of the weekend And we're talking about hot Arkansas summer, July of last year. We're talking 95, 96, 97 degrees. We had a weekend just this last weekend. We were, what, 96, 97, and it felt like it was about 105 out there. Mm -hmm. You could cook an egg on my my driveway. Yeah. And this, this canine officer was left outside. The handler states just for that day. However, there are reports that have come out that said the dog was chained up in the backyard for the course of the weekend well now i'm no fami malik but i could tell you if i was in charge of this autopsy i could tell you whether or not the dog died from blunt force trauma 
or heat stroke? Well, it, it, it's a very sticky situation. And what I mean by that is there's some thought that something happened to this dog. The dog was murdered. Mm-hmm. Okay. In my opinion, you're not going to change my opinion on that, regardless of whether it was heat stroke, blunt force trauma, or gunshot. I think this dog was, was killed. Now, if it was heat stroke, it might not have been intentional. Right. Um, but the, the they have certain protocols and procedures for how these animals, these canine officer is to be handled. Right. And these were not, they, they did not adhere to these uh, protocols. So let's, let's get into this a little bit because the sheriff said that the handler had his mother feed the dog in the morning and give the dog water. When the handler got back home, this is about five hours later, Lucky, who had been with the department since September of 2015, was dead. The dog was, quote, the dog was fine at 1.30 p.m., said Sheriff Cash. He was running and playing. Sheriff Cash said the handler saw Lucky earlier that day. The handler, this is Officer Michael Morgan, apparently was gone for most of the day. Then then the sheriff seems to believe that the blunt force trauma findings over over the heat stroke findings. So what I mean by that is Sheriff Cash, who runs this sheriff's department, right? He's, he's the head honcho. He's the guy that's supposed to be in charge here. The big cheese. He's the guy that's supposed to give a shit about officer lucky more than anybody else. Mm -hmm. And what, what he is saying is he seems to believe that the blunt force trauma findings are what is more accurate. We can't get, we can't get positive information on how this dog died in the beginning here. What and why we know that he thinks that it was blunt force trauma was because his own words, Sheriff Cash's words are, "Look, this dog suffered blunt force trauma. That's the cause of its death, and he was chained up at the time when this trauma would have occurred." Mm-hmm. Because his statements are typically with blunt force trauma being the cause of death of an animal, it's from being hit by a car. You know, it, it wanders out into the street or tries to cross the street and a, and a car hits the animal. Right. This, this dog could not have been hit by a vehicle if it's chained up in the backyard. Somebody attacked this dog, in my opinion. Now, Sheriff Cash's words. These, this is his words. Lucky had food and water. He also had his doghouse, a tree for shade, and a hanging tarp. Mm -hmm. So the initial theory was that this death was heat-related in spite of the presence of shade and water, but testing, like we said, eventually concluded that heat was not a factor. What is strange here, though, is we still have these rumors of the dog being shot, and then later being told that it was blunt force trauma that killed Officer Lucky. Well, it seems like the first findings weren't conclusive, and then the second findings of the autopsy, uh, they're not even sharing with us. Yeah, and here's here's my guess. You know, it even though Sheriff Cash seems to be spending little time, effort, and resources on this case, he must somewhere in his heart believe this is a murder because whether or not he is aware of his choice of words when he he's been cornered a few times and asked to give some explanation as to what has happened. And he sits down very calm at his desk and he, he answers the questions and he, he shies away from some questions. Mm -hmm. Um, but he's using words like he's used words like suspects and alibi saying lucky's handler, Michael Morgan has an alibi as he was reportedly with people when they believe this trauma occurred, right. stating that Michael Morgan has receipts for purchases from about the time to verify his whereabouts. And here we go where Cash says, quote, there are no suspects and share in the sheriff's office is still trying to find out who all is involved going as far to ask anyone with information to call the hot spring County Sheriff's office at five zero one three three seven 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 three eight yeah I, I i think if you got information i would call somebody else because i've been following this thing and sheriff cash does not seem overly concerned with solving this crime this murder this is the murder of an officer of a fellow officer in his department under sheriff cash's watch mm-hmm. and from my perspective 
Sheriff Cash carries himself like he's got far too more important items on his to-do list to spend the time and effort to get justice for one of his officers, for canine officer Lucky, who served the Hot Spring County Sheriff's Office and that community. And really, the thing that I think that Sheriff Cash fails to understand here is that, look, man, you're in a, you are an elected official, all right? Mm-hmm. Now, I, I'm sure he understands that. Well, I, I'm sure he understands that, mm-hmm. but he doesn't understand this next, next part. Mm-hmm. He has an opportunity to be a good leader, and that he is not. He has an opportunity to show his officers that, look, under my watch, you will be protected. This department will have your back. And guess what? This this canine officer, Lucky, is killed. Mm-hmm. And he doesn't seem to be spending any time to get justice for that life, for the community. And here's the thing. The only difference between Officer Lucky and the other officers on the sheriff's department was the fur. No. All those other officers, the, the, the men and women mm-hmm. that are serving, they signed up to be a sheriff. They signed up, signed up to be a deputy. Officer Lucky was asked. He was asked to be an officer. Right, but he's, a, he's not really asked as much. It's like, we're just going to make you an officer, right? How can you really ask a dog to be an officer? Well, they do. They do. They, they, you, when when, these, when a animal is taken to be uh, an officer, these dogs are go- sent through some hardcore training. And some of the dogs do not pass the training. So in a way, you're almost asking the dog to, to serve because, it, because Officer Lucky was smart enough mm-hmm. and worked hard enough to learn the training, to, to pass the school to become, become an officer. All right. So the handler of Lucky has an alibi. Right. And we think that is good enough. Again, we don't know if this is blunt force trauma. We don't know if there's... A gunshot, we don't know. Well, I'm guessing there is no gunshot. I'm guessing it is blunt force trauma. And um, I think if it was a gun shot, we probably would have heard about that or at least had some eyewitness of hearing a gunshot in that area around that time. Yeah. And and like you said, is that good enough? It sounds like it's good enough for Sheriff Cash. Um I don't think it's good enough for the community because like I said, he's been cornered in question about this ever since August of, he kind of came under fire for this around August of last year. You know, it took place late July, but it was, I think September end of August where there started to be some questions about this autopsy that had taken place and and the actual cause of death for this canine officer. Now go ahead. I was just going to say, let's be clear. The one of the reasons why this is important is if um, a K9 unit came into your house, you, let's say you're a drug dealer. Let's say you're, you know, selling the nose candy to mm-hmm. the local neighborhood kids, and here comes K9 Lucky into your house, and you shot him, and you killed him. You're going to go away for a lot longer than if you just even killed a person that walked into your house. This is an officer of the law, so let's just be clear about that. Well, and here's the thing. I I believe, you know, with any officer, we should hold them in higher regard as to the way they treat others. But we also we also should hold them in high regard to how they are treated when they are working and on duty, off duty. I don't care if if something happens to an officer of the law. I want to know why, who and why. And can we prosecute this person? Now, Tony Smith, he's the owner of the Little Rock Canine Academy. He's the one that brought Lucky from overseas as a puppy and trained him to be a narcotics uh, detection, tracking, and protection dog. Mm-hmm. So this, so Lucky had many jobs, let's say. And Tony Smith, quote, says, it's always sad to hear of a law enforcement dog passing away in a premature death, but this, this is disheartening. Because he says that a good handler class will teach how teach the handler how to secure the dog properly at home. And some of these measures, including getting a dog boarded at a veterinarian office. So 
l- let's go through this, okay? Mm-hmm. Kind of back back to the beginning. Sheriff Mike Cash took office January 1st, 2017, okay? At that time, most of the deputies, the active deputies of that sheriff's department were either fired or they quit when Mike Cash took over. Okay. At the time, they had two certified canine handlers. Both of these officers left the sheriff's department. Mm-hmm. Well, when well, the that ha- sounds pretty fishy. When the handlers left, uh-huh. what happened was we still have two canine officers, active canine officers. We have Lucky and we have Panto. Okay. Uh-huh. Now, Lucky was assigned to this former, this now former deputy, Michael Morgan. He was a new hire at the time, and he had never attended the Criminal Justice Academy, nor did he have any canine experience at all. Mm-hmm. So to be assigned a trained canine officer to a handler with no training. In my opinion, this is, this is dangerous. It's irresponsible, right? It's, it's, it's not a healthy situation for the community, for the handler or the dog or the Mm -hmm. canine officer. Now, former deputy Michael Morgan, he kept lucky on a chain in his backyard with him having no training or no experience himself, they're supposed to work with these dogs a certain number of hours a week, just on like training exercises. Right. And was he doing any of that? I doubt it. Uh, this officer went away to for be fair though. You don't know. I, I don't know, right. but it doesn't sound like he's being handled properly. Right. From, from an outsider looking in, not to mention the weekend that the dog died. Deputy Morgan went away for a weekend motorcycle trip to Oklahoma. Okay, this is where I have a problem with Sheriff Cash. How come you're telling me that that the officer was there for portions of that day, and we have other reports stating that the officer was out of town for the entire weekend? Mm -hmm. Which one is it? And can you just come out and be clear about it? Right. So he leaves the dog chained up in his backyard with his mother supposedly to tend to the dog. Now we have Sheriff Cash's words saying that there was water and food in the dog's bowls when when the when Lucky was found dead. Who found the dog? I it sounds to me like the handler found the dog. Like he returned from his trip and then okay. the dog is dead. And here's the problem though. There's other than Sheriff Cash, right? All the other reports state that there was no water in the dog's bowl. There was no food in the dog's bowl, which may not mean anything. But but why do, why do we have a conflicting story? Yeah, but I don't know. I, I, it wouldn't be too much. Maybe the handler sees the dog, sees that it's dead, calls it in, starts cleaning up. The dog stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Well, and and here's the other thing. I don't know about this specific location, about this specific area, but most police departments usually have protocols in place for a canine when the handler is away. Most require the canine to be boarded at an approved facility or stay with another handler. mm -hmm, But they're giving it to a handler that's not even a handler. Right. So the responsibility on this handler is you know, irresponsible in the first place. So I'm just guessing if this is what they're dealing with, they don't, they don't have certain protocols that, or they probably have them. They just don't have the means to follow them. Well, and to add to the confusion, deputy Morgan, like we said, now former deputy Morgan, he has a somewhat colorful history himself, including a order of rainbow (laughs) uh, order of protection against him from one of his ex wives. Uh, He has a number of traffic violations and he is no longer with the sheriff's department because, and this is, I'm quoting an article here because I don't have the exact information in front of me because of an alleged criminal act for which no charges have been filed by the sheriff's department. I don't know what that criminal act is or if it's even real because they didn't Mm -hmm. file any charges. It is again, it's alleged, but not only not only is this guy not qualified it's to ridiculous. be ridiculous. A- wait, wait, we think this guy did a crime, so we're going to fire him, but we're not charging him with the crime. Well, we don't know if they fired him. The, the sheriff's What's office. What's the crime? I, I don't, don't know, know. I don't know what the crime is, but mm. the, to, but the thing too, that's confusing is the sheriff's office will not even say exactly why he would, this guy was let go. 
Yeah, it might be for the murder of this dog. Well, it, it, but that's what alleged, I'm, I mean. You you said it yourself. It's alleged criminal activity. Mm-hmm. It's alleged crime. It could be that simple. And I think that's when we first, me and you first talked about this case. I said, you know, I don't want to throw the sheriff under the bus too much because this is a difficult situation to deal with. And if he figured out that one of his officers, the handler, that he put in charge of a dog, but he knows that this handler does not have the proper training for this dog, that, and then you find out that the handler killed the dog, well, now once we got rid of him, now Morgan is gone, the problem is gone, it's obviously not going to happen again, and, you know, does he owe his um, community answers? I think so. I don't know if you're going to get them. Well, here's the thing. Here's the problem for Sheriff Cash. He is going to have to go up for re-election at some point. At the end of this year, his term is over. Mm-hmm. So he's going to have to ask the community to sign him up for the job once again. How old is he, though? Because he might be thinking. Of, That's true. He might, he might just be thinking retire. About, hey, you know, this is just a little too much. I mean, you become sheriff and half the people quit or get fired. I mean, this is this doesn't sound like a department that's running on the up and up, anyways. Well, okay. <laughs> I mean, how do you have two K nine uh, handlers quit at the same time? Unless he's that much of a dick, you know, cockface. Well, it, it sounds to me, and I didn't know this. It sounds to me that when a new sheriff, there's a new sheriff in town. When there's the new sheriff, um, the new sheriff in town. That the deputies under the old regime can either stay on or or move to a different you know sheriff's office or relocate mm-hmm. or whatever that they can stay on or the sheriff can determine who they keep on. It's almost like a like a football coach in the NFL. You know when right. new new guy shows up, some of the old guys are gone all of a sudden, and that sounds to me like that's the situation here. Um, at least that's how it's reported now. Here's another issue that I have with Sheriff Mike Cash. When he's cornered, when he's asked the tough questions about Officer Lucky, he he then goes on to complain that, you know, our office, my office has been flooded with with calls for almost a year about this situation. Right. And he states that he believes that it's it's, uh, just these crazy animal lovers or... He's stating that a lot of the heat is coming from people who support his opponent. This is Woody Perry is going to be his opponent, Um, which, which look, he's, he's sitting down in front of a camera. He has the opportunity to educate the community about what has happened Mm -hmm. to show the community that his department will stop at nothing to protect its officers. Mm -hmm. Instead, he uses the time to complain about his, 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 his opponent in the upcoming election. And then the other thing, this is another thing that KATV has been all over this mm-hmm. and I, and I commend them. I pat them on the backs, mm-hmm. but, <laughs> um, on the buttocks. Well, h- listen to this captain, mm-hmm. because this is super weird. You're super and, weird. and I say, uh, I'm going to say, so how did can the canine officer die? That is a good question. We've been over it a little bit, but this, this is one thing that we've not covered yet. KATV has, They've seen the case file okay. from the sheriff's office. And here's what they've had to say in their reports that they had come across body cam audio, not the actual vi- video, just the audio from a body camera on one of the officers. This was, and it captures hot spring County investigators talking to officer Morgan, the, the handler right. at his home upon learning of the dog's death. On the recording, an investigator can be heard saying to Morgan, quote, if we don't ask, what is everyone going to say? You're a policeman. We are trying to find out what happened, and that's all. Seems like Officer Morgan was a little dodgy about being asked tough questions about what could have happened to the dog. And according to the case file, Investigators at the scene noted that Morgan left for the entire weekend. This is from the case file, according to KATV left for the weekend and left lucky in the care of someone else. Records state that lucky was left 
leashed and tethered in the yard. The case file also notes his food and water bowls both appeared to have been empty and empty for some time. Right. Investigators also observed a significant amount of blood on Lucky's body, along with a small hole behind his left ear. On the body cam audio, an investigator can be heard saying to Morgan, quote, I'm going to tell you, and you don't tell anyone this part, but Lucky was shot. Michael, we aren't treating you like a suspect, but the dog was shot, and we need to know who done it, end quote. Right, so is this information that they can prove? I mean, they're saying that they're seeing this from a camera. Is this this camera information out there to the public, or is this just what they're reporting? It, they're reporting, that's what they've reported. And they've, they've reported that they've heard the audio that was on that body cam. Right. And that's what the audio says. Now we're mind you, we're only hearing pieces of that. We're only getting told pieces of that. It'd be interesting to hear the entire thing because if we're to believe what KATV is saying, then it sounds like not only did Morgan officer Morgan, he may have killed the dog. He may have murdered the dog. Or two, that the investigator that showed up that was asking Morgan questions was kind of uh, maybe on Morgan's side a little bit. And it sounds like he it sounds like he's asking him tough questions, but he's also saying, "Hey, look, we're we're not saying you're a suspect. Uh, I'm right, going to tell right, you. Right. I'm going to tell you this. You can't tell. Don't tell anyone. But this dog was shot. Yeah. And well, they could have been friends. You don't know. Well, so, I mean, I think the tough thing here is. If he did kill the dog, if the handler killed the dog, mm-hmm. now the handler's gone. He doesn't work there anymore. I don't know what the punishment would have been uh, with Lucky not being on duty, but mm-hmm. being off duty. I don't know what the punishment would be, and that's why I wonder if Sheriff is just thinking, this guy's gone, he's not going to be a problem for me anymore, and maybe legally he can't come out. You, you just can't... Maybe they don't have definitive proof that he killed the dog, Mm -hmm. but that's what they suspect, but he's gone anyways. But I can't then just go, hey, by the way, the dog was killed. Oh, really? Then who was he killed by? I can't throw this guy under. I can't say the guy's name. And then people would give him shit for not saying the guy's name. Mm -hmm. And then if he did say the guy's name and they don't have any proof, guess what? There's a lawsuit. So I think they know what happened. And I think, their hands are tied probably on why they can, why they can't release this information. Well, the, another guy weighed in on this, giving his opinion. And this is Academy trainer, Jim McEwen. And he says he he trained lucky to become a canine officer. He contacted KATV to say that the dog's death in his opinion was suspicious and saying, quote, this department was handling this case instead of having an outside agency come and investigate the way that it should have been done. And he goes on to say, quote, if they had done that, there wouldn't be an issue right now. And I think he's exactly right. And I I don't know standard procedure down there, but I would believe that you would want an outside agency to come in and look at this case because a couple things could happen here. If there was wrongdoing by anybody inside your department, they could easily cover anything up. Now, if you have an outside agency look at this, then everybody after the fact can stand back and go, look, we understand why no charges were pressed. We, we, we understand that somebody came in and looked at this without bias, came in there and looked at this without bias and made a ruling, made a decision and decided that no charges could be pressed in this situation rather than handling it by yourself, right? Letting the department take a look at it yourself. Now, K a TV. So, okay. According to the case file, this is more strange business. According to the case file, an investigator took photos at the scene where lucky died. Now K a TV requested those photos, but Sheriff cash said in a letter and in an interview as well, that the photos did not exist stating quote, I haven't got the pictures and they're not in the file back there. I don't know if the investigator took them with his phone or what 
meaning his personal cell phone. Right. He states the investigator no longer works here. Right. But I, I don't think, again, that to me, that doesn't make the department look shady or make the sheriff look shady. It's, this is what happened. And we had an investigation, and, and I'm sure, uh, you know, if look, if this was a, a murder scene, which it should have just been treated like one. Right. Right. But but it seems like this department was like, well, it's a dog. So this is, we're going to disinvestigate it differently. Yeah. And I think that that's what I'm having an issue with. And I think that's what a, so many other people have a big problem with is, is exactly that. What you just described. It's if, if Sheriff Cash treated officer lucky, like an officer, this would have been handled much differently. And instead his look is, well, it's just a dog. It's just a dog. That's at least that's the, that's what he's putting out there. He's not stating that, but that's what I kind of see the effort being made here. Yeah. But he's the one that kind of, I mean, he could have just from the beginning just said, Hey, dog died from heat exhaustion. This was an accident. You know, we're really sorry. Blah, blah, blah. And Hey, by the way, the handler's gone. So we don't have to deal with that anymore. Right. Mm -hmm. He could have done that. And that would have been treated as like, it's just a dog. Mm -hmm. But he did come out and say, hey, look, I think there's something more to this. It wasn't just heat exhaustion. He's then the one that says, not only do I not think it's heat exhaustion, but there was water and there was food. He was the one that said that. Right. Again, pointing away from the heat exhaustion. I think, it, like I said before, it's as simple to me as here's a guy that his hands are tied and he knows probably more than he wants to know. And he... And now he can't share that with, with the public. Well, if the canine trainer that we quoted earlier, if he is correct in his statement stating that an outside agency should have been brought in, if that's normal procedure, if, if he's correct in that statement, then I think there is wrongdoing here. Yeah. But what's the relationship be between the sheriff and the, the, then the police officer, the handler, you just, I don't, I don't know. Were they friends? Don't know. And, and is that enough of a reason that the person would say, okay, yes, this guy's maybe a little violent, maybe a little, a bit of an alcoholic, or I don't know, I'm just speculating. And I'm just saying, is it possible that they have some kind of relationship and he didn't want to see the guy's life get ruined because of a horrible, um, one horrible action? Mm-hmm. Well, and like you said, you did point out something very good there and it's, and it's obvious, but it's good is the, you can suspect all you want different things, but what can you prove and what evidence do you have to, to point the finger at somebody and tell you what, what actually happened in this situation and who's to blame for it? Right. And my point is, is that if you have all these pieces, they have more information than we have, right? Yeah. The sheriff has more information than we have. And so based off that information that he has. I think he knows who's responsible and that guy is gone. And again, you can't then give all the answers to the public because guess who's going to sue your ass because, because you're making claims that you can't prove you didn't press charges. You didn't do all these things. And if you come out and say, we think the handler shot the dog, we think he murdered this dog. Mm -hmm. Then if you can't prove that, you got a lawsuit on your hands mm -hmm. and, and then guess who's not going to get reelected anyways. Right. I see, I see what you're saying, but the pro the, the problem I have here is we have a case file that states that there were pictures taken of the crime scene. Right. Right. Well, that's allegedly right. No, this, this is according to KATV. They're stating we've seen, we were able to review the case file. And in that case files where we found this body cam audio with the strange questions and the statement of the dog being shot. And we also have so somewhere in there, it's written that there were photos taken at the, at the scene. Okay. So what, here's where I have a big problem. Okay. One, an officer's murdered Two, these, the, the case file is now incomplete. We know it's incomplete because of several reasons. It states at one time there were pictures of the crime scene. They're not in that file anymore. Why not? Right. Okay. But who who do you hold responsible for that? I hold Sheriff Cash responsible for that. It's his department. 
Well, I know he, it's ha- his he has department. An, he has an incomplete case file. He has a handler that was not trained to be a handler. Doesn't even sound like the the guy was trained to be an officer of the law. We who's no longer with the department. We have an investigator who supposedly investigated this murder of Officer Lucky, who's no longer with the department. I look. I'm just saying, if this thing was handled this poorly, I wonder how they're handling other situations down there. Right. You know what I mean? You, you, Hopefully they're not handling anything. I don't I don't think that this suggests that there's some big, huge, major cover up on Sheriff Cash's part. What I what I think it's evidence of is his his lack of ability to be a good leader. Yeah, but sometimes you're fighting a battle with your hands tied behind your back. You show up, half the people leave or get fired. And now you have a situation that you have this guy that's underqualified to to handle a dog, but you have to have somebody do it. And then this guy ends up possibly being a giant, huge piece of shit, right? And so now we got this dead dog. Now what do we do about it? So now we have an investigator, and he investigates it. Where did he go? We don't know if he got fired or if he quit. We don't know. Where did the pictures go? We don't know. Right. And so now you got all these questions that are being brought to you, and you got all these, you know, fucking dildo heads running, you know, helping you run this department, and you have to answer for all these people. You know, yes, that's your job to lead. Yes, it's your job to try to get it together. But, you know, I don't want to throw this guy under the bus too hard because we don't know what he's working with. Well, I, I see what you're saying, but but the results, the results that we're getting are not good enough. And he's the leader. The results that we're getting at the end of the day. Okay, but here, okay, I'm just going to play devil's advocate. If he knows what happened, right? 100% knows, but he can't prove it. Then what do you want him to do? Um, I would like, I would like that. That's a good enough explanation for me, actually. Look, we, we think some wrongdoing happened here. We can't prove anything. Well, but he kind of said it. I mean, he, he, he basically told, he could have went with the theory that the dog, you know, died from heat exhaustion, right? Right. He could have went with that theory. He did not go with that theory. He was, you know, pretty clear that, Hey, something happened here. And yeah. And now is he not answering the next question again? I think possibly that could be because of a lawsuit. I'm not saying to tar and feather the guy. I'm just saying that he was elected to do, to perform a job as the sheriff of this entire department. At the end of the day, the results of, of what's going on in the department and the results of how they're handling situations, right. they're not good enough. They're not good enough for you to be the sheriff anymore is what I'm stating. I, I, I don't, I'm not saying we need to prosecute this guy and, and send, him to, send him off to jail forever and, and throw away the key. I'm just saying the job that he asked the community to do to, hey, elect me to hold this position. Um, oh, and by the way, an officer will be, ends up dead. And regardless of what happened, we have an incomplete case file. We have two officers that are no longer with the department. We have people people being canine officers, handlers that are not not trained to do so. Right. And like I said, it, it doesn't have, it has more to do with what else is going on down there? If this if this was handled this poorly, what? How else are they handling things? And like you said, it's it appears to me like this dude took over. I'm the new sheriff, and I'm just going to mail it in for a couple years, and hopefully I get reelected. But it doesn't work that way, Sheriff Cash. It doesn't work that way. You either do a good job or you don't. And if you don't, you're out. Right. But I don't live there. I don't know what he's doing on a day to day basis. I don't know. Uh, what the community feels about his work ethic or what he's doing in their community. And I don't know if this is just a black eye on that or if this is the norm.
Well, Captain, I appreciate you sitting down with me and discussing the case of Officer Lucky. I hope that they find justice for Officer Lucky at some point, and maybe by us getting together today keeps this case alive, keeps the story alive, and we can finally get answers that the community deserves. Officer Lucky deserved a officer's send-off, an officer's funeral, which I reviewed that, and it it was lackluster. He didn't receive the proper send-off, in my opinion. So if you live in that area, get involved, call somebody, keep this case alive. We wanted to present this because technically we were supposed to be off this week, Captain. Right. Um, It's a beautiful holiday week hey wait was i supposed to be recording happy fourth of july to everybody i hope everybody has a safe and happy fourth of july but we wanted to make sure that we brought this case up and kept it alive now i think we should leave on a happy note today and point out just how important these canine officers such as officer lucky are and this is from hancock county in mississippi So a Hancock County, Mississippi Sheriff's deputy, this is Todd Frazier, is alive today because of his canine partner who was free to save his life as three men were about to murder him. The deputy spots, this is how the story goes down. The deputy spots a lone male sitting behind the wheel in a parked car near a rest stop. As he investigates the situation, two men approach and begin to talk to him. As the men distract deputy Frazier, The driver of the car gets out, and the three men then ambush the deputy. They tell Frazier that he is going to die, that they are going to slit his throat. As the three men begin to drag the officer toward the nearby woods to carry out their heinous plan, Frazier is able to free his hand. He hits a button that automatically opens the door to his vehicle where his canine partner, Lucas, is witnessing the crime through the window. Without hesitation, Lucas jumps into action, charges the three men, biting them, and successfully aborts the attack on the officer's life. And for everybody that's wondering, yes, I'm signing Frank up to try to be a canine officer. (laughs) And I hope everybody has a good 4th of July. And we will see everybody back here in the garage next week. Until then, be good, be kind, and don't litter.